Okay, so it looks like we have most people now on the line, so I'm going to go ahead and jump straight in. Uh, welcome everybody to Training 101 The Basics. The aim of today's session is to help you get set up on the autopilot platform as a user and feel comfortable in creating your first few journeys. So a little bit about me before we get started. Uh, my name is Eloise Shuttleworth. I am a customer success manager here at Autopilot. My role is very much focused on implementation and ongoing strategy. So I'm super excited to be taking you all through this webinar today and then hopefully working with you in future as well as new users of the Autopilot platform. Now we do have quite a bit to cover today, starting with a high level overview of customer journey marketing and our acquired nurture and grow methodology. But we will be spending the majority of the time in the autopilot platform today. So I'll be sure to take you through account setup, key features of the product, and then publishing your first journey. Now, I do really want today to be as useful as possible for everyone, so please feel free to ask me any questions you might have as we go through today's training. You can use the GoToMeeting panel as you see here on the screen. Um, I will answer as many questions as I can as we go through, but I've also left time at the end of a session uh, for a Q&A, so we'll answer all of your questions today uh, as and when we can. So before we jump into the autopilot platform, I did mention that I wanted to give you a high level overview of autopilot and our methodology behind crafting those really remarkable marketing campaigns. So we're extremely passionate here about empowering marketers to create innovative journeys at each stage of a customer's life cycle. And we encourage everyone, ourselves included, uh, to adopt this acquire, nurture, grow methodology and build out a story within each definable stage to better target your audience and achieve key milestones. So as a first step today, I wanted to take you through this framework so you can use it then as a foundation to build those journeys uh, as you go ahead and use the autopilot platform uh, in and of your own companies. So with that in mind, the first phase that we focus on here at Autopilot is the acquisition phase, which is built around turning those unknown users that hit your site or your marketing materials into known leads that we can start to target and engage through personalized communication pieces. Now, journeys within this phase often focus around inquiry forms, welcome campaigns and trial signups, and they're really designed to quickly qualify your leads and route them to their respective team funnels. Now, if you're looking to focus on this stage of the life cycle at your end, then I'd really recommend you find a best-in-class case study that you can model your journeys on. And we've actually chosen live chat as one of those best-in-class case studies that you can go ahead and read about and learn how they were able to increase their email engagement by 360% through a really fantastic Acquire campaign. Now, we have popped a link to the live chat webinar, uh, webinar <laughs> into the uh, chat screen today um, of the GoToMeeting panel, so please do feel free to make use of that link. You can also head on over to our blog uh, and just search for live chat on the homepage there and you'll be taken straight to that webinar. So definitely encourage you to have a read of that blog article, watch the webinar, especially if you're looking to focus on this acquire stage for your nurture uh, generation through autopilot. Now, once you've acquired and qualified your leads, the next phase to focus on is the nurture phase. So this phase is all about getting your leads to that point in their life cycle at which they're ready to buy. Now, statistically speaking, we see that about 25% of leads are ready to buy straight away. The other 75% of leads will likely purchase within the next six to 12 months, but you really need to actively nurture them to that point of purchase. So key to this is educating leads around who you are, what you do, and how you can help them to achieve their goals. Because of this, we often see that journeys in this phase revolve around thought leadership, customer review and proof points, product updates, and those carefully placed calls to action. So Instapage is another example of an autopilot partner that has crafted a really brilliant reactivation journey within this stage. So again, I'd encourage you to review their story if you're looking for some inspiration when creating your own nurture journeys. They used educational emails built around their value add and what made them stand out from their competitors to re-engage users and take them down escalated journey paths based on email engagement. 
After two months, they've actually generated $30,000 in reactivation revenue. So it's a really fantastic example of a way in which these nurture journeys start to impact the bottom line. Again, if you're keen to learn a bit more about Instapage and watch a webinar and exactly how they built this journey, I've popped that link into the chat section of your GoToWebinar panel as well. So please feel free to make use of that. And again, you can always find it uh, on our blog if you want to access it a little later on. Now, once we've got our leads to convert, we then enter phase three of the Acquire, Nurture, Grow methodology and shift our focus to growing with that customer. So encouraging them to take key steps towards success milestones, updating them with new product features, and always staying ahead of the curve where best practices and industry insights are concerned is really key to this section of the journey. Now, journeys we've helped our customers uh, create within this phase often incorporate onboarding steps, newsletters, you can look at NPS surveys, webinars, and even renewal notices at those really specific points in the customer's life cycle. But the goal here is really to keep your customers excited and invested in your brand and gain their loyalty over time to ensure that mutual growth and success. So again, one last case study to draw your attention to uh, is that of the Golden Gate Wine. So they've had huge success with personalized promotions and offers based on previous purchases, which saw them uh, lead to a 150% increase in online sales. So along with the links to live chat and Instapage, I've also included this in the chats chat section of the GoToWebinar panel. So again, please feel free to copy and paste those uh, and then you can review them at your own time. Now, alongside those webinars and blog posts that I've mentioned, we do also have a number of guidebooks that are available within the Autopilot dashboard, and they'll help you set up key journeys within each of these three phases. So I'll show you exactly where you can access them in the platform when we dive into that journey canvas. Last but not least, we do also have a ton of resources available via our Liftoff blog and Flight School, so definitely encourage you to check out both of those spaces when you have a spare moment or two. Okay, so as promised, we are going to spend the rest of this session in the autopilot dashboard. Uh, my aim of today is that by the end of this session, you'll know how to add new team members to your account, add the autopilot tracking code to your web pages, thereby unlocking a few key pieces of functionality within the platform. Configure your email subdomain if that's something you're looking to do at your end. Uh, connect your different applications and add your context, contacts to your account. Create your first proactive heads up. And then last but not least, also be able to capture forms across your site so that you can start to ingest this data into autopilot and turn those leads into uh, nurtured customers through journeys. So let's get started. And as I am crossing over my screen, again, guys, just a quick reminder about the questions panel on the GoToMeeting app. Uh, please do feel free to make use of that. And then uh, as we go through, I can answer any questions that you have. Uh, and I can also leave time at the end, uh, as I mentioned before, to uh, do a Q&A session as well. Great, so I'm now in my own demo account through Autopilot and I'm going to use this today to show you those uh, key configuration steps and talk you through the platform so that you get a better understanding and can go ahead and, uh, and start to put this practice into place in your own accounts. So when you do log in to your Autopilot account, the first view that you see is that of your Autopilot dashboard, which is made up of the lead funnel on the left-hand side and the activity feed on the right-hand side. So we like to think of this as the main hub or mission control. And to me, what's most exciting about this uh, view here is that the activity feed on the right hand side actually shows you the actions that your known and anonymous web visitors are taking in real time. So you can see here, for example, that I know uh, when somebody has opened an email and I know when that email was sent to them. I can also start to get a view as to which pages on my website uh, my known and unknown visitors are, are clicking through on and, and browsing. So it's a really fantastic way to see how your users are engaging with your marketing content on your website and from there then go ahead and put into place some really actionable insights. Now, an important distinction to make up front here, you'll notice that I have anonymous visitors that are popping through my activity feed and also those known users as well. 
So we do here at Autopilot treat every visitor that comes to your website as an anonymous visitor when they first land on a page that has the Autopilot tracking code on it. Now, as soon as that visitor engages with an Autopilot trigger, we'll be able to use their email address and capture it to then identify them and turn them into a no user, as you can see here in my platform. From that point onwards, we'll then be able to associate all of their activity with their user instance in Autopilot, and we can even backtrack that association so that any activity they performed in the past as an anonymous user is now linked to their contact instance in Autopilot. Now, autopilot triggers or actions that turn a user from anonymous to known on your site include things like if they submit a form that we're tracking through the autopilot dashboard, if they open an email that has been sent through autopilot, or if they click on an autopilot heads up message, which again is going to be something that we get to today and I show you uh, exactly how to set up on your end. Now, very quickly on the left-hand side here is the lead funnel. Uh, this gives you more of a high-level overview of your marketing journeys. So once you have the autopilot tracking code embedded on your pages, you will start to see the visitors and conversions data that you see here uh, start to pull through and populate in your funnel. And then the leads, opportunities, and closed one will all populate if you're using Salesforce and if you have your Salesforce account synced with autopilot. So again, this is just a very high level overview of how your marketing campaigns are performing. Uh, I use it mostly to see how many active journeys I have. Active journeys are those that are live. And then again, just to get a really quick snapshot of how many emails I've sent out to my contact base uh, to date. Now, I have mentioned a number of dry foundational things already, such as the autopilot tracking code and the Salesforce sync. Uh, so what I want to do is jump straight into the settings portion of the dashboard and take you through those steps uh, to configure so that we can get onto the exciting stuff after that, like segmenting your contacts and building your journeys. So when you land on the settings panel, you'll see a number of options here, including your account details, uh, your team page, where you can add team members and create individual avatars for them, um, your mail settings, which we'll get to, and also, most importantly, the tracking code. So I'm going to take you through a couple of these now, um, starting with the tracking code, as that is arguably the most important foundational step uh, for you to get up and running. Now, as I mentioned before, the reason the tracking code is so important is that it does unlock a number of key pieces of functionality within the autopilot platform, including tracking your users and turning them from anonymous visitors into known contacts. Uh, it's also crucial if you want to start uh, importing and uh, adding those forms that are across your website into autopilot. And it's also needed if you want to go ahead and set up the proactive heads up feature, which we'll be looking at in a few moments time. Now we do offer two different types of tracking codes. One is for your web pages and one is for your app. So depending on uh, which application or website you're using, it'll just depend then on the tracking code that you use. Um, but I am going to jump into the web pages tracking code today because that is very often the uh, main tracking code that a lot of our customers use. Uh, and this can be used across all of your web properties, including your website, landing pages, blogs, etc. So all you need to do to add this tracking code to your site is copy the unique tracking code that you see here in your box and then paste that into the header tag of every page that you want Autopilot to be able to track. So we do really try and make this step as easy as possible. You can email yourself some step-by-step -step instructions to adding this tracking code to the header of your web pages. Uh, you can also, if you're working with an IT team or a dev team to implement this step, add their email address in here and send them the instructions so that they get those direct to their inbox. Now, once the tracking code has been placed successfully on your web pages, you'll start to see that activity feed that we just walked through uh, in your autopilot dashboard fill up with user activity. So you'll know really quickly that it's there working uh, and tracking all of your user activity across your site and marketing materials. Now, another important setup feature can be found in mail settings, which I'm accessing just on the left-hand side from this settings panel. 
Mail settings allows you to configure your mail domain so that it looks like emails you send from the autopilot platform are coming from your own custom email address. Now, this doesn't mean that the emails will come direct from your email provider, but instead will be sending on behalf of your domain through our own mail servers. So we definitely would encourage you to complete this step if you have bandwidth during the configuration, as we have found that it increases trust and uh, brand association through that brand personality that you have built up over the years. Um, there are some very simple step-by-step -step instructions that can be found by clicking the learn more link just up here. But at a very high level, you'll need to change about five DNS records on your end to complete the configuration. And all you'll need to do to do that is log into the host provider account that uh, you set up when you registered your domain name. So when you do click this learn more link, we will take you through to uh, a dedicated support page for this configuration step, which provides you with step-by-step -step instructions for uh, changing those five DNS records. And we also have some uh, troubleshoot questions on there that we've provided some really concise answers to. So hopefully that makes it as simple as possible for you or your tech team to set up. Um, but if you do have any troubles configuring this stage, our support team is also on hand to help should you have any questions. So please feel free to email them at support at autopilothq.com. Now, if you decide not to configure a custom email domain, that's also totally fine. Uh, we will simply send emails from a pre-assigned domain name at our uh, email server, which will be your autopilot instance at autopilotmail.io, as you can see up here. Uh, my autopilot instance is autopilot12, so emails will look like they've been sent from autopilot12 at autopilotmail.io. Now, if you're using Salesforce, uh, again, I'm going to jump into the next configuration step here, which is the Salesforce sync. We do have a native Salesforce integration here at Autopilot that will allow you to sync your account and import all of your leads, contacts, and accounts in Autopilot. And then once synced, you can then use Salesforce triggers, actions, and conditions in your journeys to build out some really targeted campaigns and use cases. So connect, all you'd need to do is select the big sync, uh, green sync button, which would be here had I uh, not already connected to Salesforce in my account. From there, you'll enter your credentials and then do some quick field mappings uh, to make sure that the information you have in your Salesforce account is being stored in the correct places in Autopilot, as you can see here from my mapping. You can also use this mapping step to get rid of any information that you don't want to carry over into Autopilot and leverage when building customer profiles. All you would do then is just make sure that the Autopilot field is blank so that we don't copy that information over into Autopilot. Now, if you don't want to sync all of your Salesforce data with Autopilot, we also offer a selective Salesforce sync during configuration, and that will allow you to set up specific sync criteria against which those uh, leads, contacts, and accounts are synced with Autopilot. Now, two points to note here about the Salesforce integration. So Autopilot does treat Salesforce as the master database. We won't add any new contacts to Salesforce uh, for that matter, unless you specifically set this up within a journey, which I'll show you how to do when we jump into the journey canvas. The other thing to note about the Salesforce integration is that it is a bi-directional sync. So any changes you make in Salesforce uh, will flow through into Autopilot. And then depending on the activity sync that you've set up for Autopilot to pass information back to Salesforce, that uh, any updates uh, in Autopilot will also sync back to Salesforce uh, depending on this activity sync setup. Now, for those of you that aren't using Salesforce, we do also have a number of app connections that we make available through the platform. And these app connections will make it possible for you to connect with over 700 different apps, including Segment, Twilio, Slack, and Zapier. Uh, Zapier is my personal favorite, uh, which I will get to in a moment. But being able to connect to these apps will largely depend on uh, which systems you already have access to or which systems you're willing to sign up for in future. So a quick summary of each, just in case uh, any of you are wondering what is available via our app integrations. 
So segment will allow you to trigger journeys based on events and milestones that are happening on your website or app. Uh, for example, here at Autopilot, we use uh, the segment integration to uh, collect logins or signups via our app. Uh, every time somebody signs up for a trial account in our app, a segment event is created and passed to autopilot, and we then use that to trigger those contacts into a lead nurture and qualification journey. So really great, great way if you are dependent on events happening on your website or app to start integrating those into autopilot and triggering people into specific journeys. Twilio will enable you to incorporate text messages into your journeys. So we do have an out-of-the-box SMS bundle that you can send uh, up to 250 SMSs with a month. Uh, so that is accessible on all um, contact plans. But if you did want to go above that limit or have your own Twilio account, you can also connect it here to leverage the ownership and flexibility that that will afford to you. Now our Slack integration will connect to your team's Slack channels if you are using Slack and enable you to send notifications and messages to particular groups at certain points within journeys. Uh, Recurly we use for invoicing as do a number of our customers. And then Zapier is the app connection I mentioned earlier. Uh, and the reason why it's my favorite is that it actually enables you to connect with over 500 different apps and leverage platforms that you're probably already using today. Um, a couple of my favorites include MailChimp, Instagram, Shopify, uh, Eventbrite, even GoToWebinar, which we're using today to run this training session. So definitely recommend that you look at your marketing stack, see which apps you're using, and therefore off the back of that through Zapier, which apps you can tie into autopilot to better import and segment your users using that data. The other key one I forgot to mention through Zapier here that I get asked uh, a lot about through different customers is uh, can I connect to my social media platforms? So Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and the answer is yes through our Zapier connection. So uh, that's another key one to mention for all of you on the line today. Now, integrating with these apps is incredibly easy. All you'll need to do is uh, select the app platform that you currently work with or want to connect to. Uh, let's go with Twilio for today and then just hit this big green uh, connect button here and we'll take you through step by step how you can connect to uh, that application via your autopilot dashboard here. Okay, so before we head out of the settings part of the dashboard, uh, just a quick summary then of the configuration steps that we've already walked through. So we have talked through app connections here and the Salesforce sync if you have Salesforce and want to connect it to autopilot. Tracking code being a big one here, mail settings, and also adding your own team members. Um, definitely recommend that this is your first stop shop, as it were, when logging into your autopilot platform and configuring your account. Okay, so right back at the beginning of the session, I mentioned to you that I wanted to show you as a part of the configuration steps, our proactive heads up feature. Now, this is actually one of my favorite uh, functions or features within the autopilot dashboard. So I'm gonna spend a bit of time taking you through it. Uh, and because it is my favorite feature, I also recommend it be one of these uh, key foundational steps for you when configuring your account. Now, the proactive heads up feature is really designed to turn those unknown users that we were talking about initially that hit your site uh, into known users that you can then develop as leads within your autopilot platform. So at a very high level, it's a pop-up message that looks almost like a chat box. It will show up in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, uh, and it's designed to engage your users and either direct them to a specific landing page where we can capture their user information or have them into their email address so that we can capture it within the platform and add them to a list. Now, instead of me talking through it, I thought what would be best is to actually show uh, this feature working in real life. So I'm now going to just quickly jump into my demo site and you can see here down the bottom right hand corner of my screen uh, that we have the heads up, the proactive heads up feature uh, enabled on my homepage. It is truncated at the moment as it's designed to be, but when a user hovers over it, you can see that that full message pops up. 
In this case, I am asking people to sign up for my newsletter by entering their first name and email address. And really, this is a hook to get them uh, engaged with my platform, get them willing to give me my details. And when they do enter their details into this uh, proactive heads up box, they're then going to fall through into autopilot, turn from an anonymous user into a known, and I can then start to add them as leads to my journeys, depending on how they want to engage with my brand. So how do you set one of these up? Great question. So I'm jumping back into the autopilot platform here. Again, I'm in the proactive heads up portion of my dashboard. And all I'm going to do is hit this big green plus button here to add a new proactive heads up message to my website. Now I'm given three options at this stage and I'll quickly take you through what those different options are. So the first we call a proactive call to action, and this is designed to uh, send users to a specific landing page where you can then get them to, for example, sign up for a webinar. Here at Autopilot, we do use that a lot when we have a webinar upcoming. Uh, so it's a fantastic use case and way in which you can start to incorporate this onto specific pages on your site. Now the proactive reply back is designed to enable users to start an email conversation with one of your team members. Uh, so this is probably the closest aligned to live chat, but instead of having to have somebody monitor that live chat box at all times, uh, this will send an email straight away to a member on your team and they can then engage with that user via email alongside capturing their details so that we can add them as a lead uh, in autopilot and to journeys in future. Now the Proactive Subscribe is possibly my favorite of all of the three and it is the one that you saw working on my demo site. And the aim of the Proactive Subscribe here is to capture a person's first name, last name and email address and from there add them to a list within Autopilot. So I am, if I can spell, uh, going to take you through uh, this Proactive Subscribe today so that you can see how easy it is to set it up and get it running on your site. Now, as I hit continue, guys, again, uh, just a reminder about the questions panel. I hope uh, the lack of questions means that everything is making sense and I'm hitting all of the questions that you had coming in today's session, but please feel free uh, to leave me a question. Great, Dan, uh, is the recorded version of today's session? That is indeed, I am recording it. So if you would like a copy of the recording, uh, please drop me an email after this session. My email address is just eloise at autopilothq.com. Com. Eloise is spelled E-L-O-I-S-E -E, and I'll get that recording across to you so you can share it with team members. Okay, so back to the proactive heads up. Uh, step one of the configuration after you've selected the type of heads up message that you would like to display is to select whether that message appears on any page to an unknown user or a specific page on your website. Now, when selecting specific page, you have a couple of different options here for the page URL, uh, depending on your use case and whether you have those uh, specific URLs in mind or a group of URLs that begins with a standard uh, piece of code. Enter in the email, uh, the URL here um, to specify that URL, and then this proactive heads up message will only appear on that page. Now, a great use case for this here at Autopilot, we use this specific page when somebody lands on our pricing page. Uh, we know that they're engaged and likely looking at our pricing and plan options. So we'll push a specific message from one of our sales team members to say something along the lines of, hey, noticed you on our pricing page. Would you like to chat to somebody from our sales team to understand uh, the best options for your company. So great use case. But today though, I'll take you through any page just so you can see this setup. Now the next stage here is all about customizing and configuring the look and feel of that message. So the first thing you'll want to do is select a team member. And this is where adding team members to your account during the settings uh, part of your configuration step is key because uh, you will want to select a team member for this message to come from. 
So today I'm going to select myself as the only team member in my demo account. Uh, you can see here that my uh, picture pops up as well as my name and title. If I wanted to change that, let's say I wasn't really happy with my picture, I can do so from within this edit window. But again, uh, feedback here is that you do have to have that team member at least existing uh, within the team members panel of your settings configuration to be able to add them to these proactive heads up messages. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is add in your message uh, that users will see when they hover over the uh, truncated version. So for the purpose of today's demo, let's just go with a really simple, um, hi, thanks for visiting um, the work mode. Why not sign up for a weekly newsletter to get the latest looks? And then because I am in this instance asking people to sign up for my newsletter, I do want to capture their first name so that I can start to personalize that newsletter that I send to them. Um, but for today, I won't capture their last name, but you can do if that's uh, something that you want to capture at your end. Email is always required through the Practive Heads Up because we do use the email address as the unique identifier for that contact within Autopilot. Next stage of the configuration here is to select your button text. So let's go with sign me up. And then last but not least, uh, select the color that you would like your button to appear in. So we have a couple of different options, um, including you know black if you're looking for something really simple. If you want to go even simpler than black, you can also select the URL link look and feel uh, if that's best suited to your website. For today, though, I'm going to go with, uh, let's go a bit out of the box and go with blue. Hit continue. And it's at this point that I am now asked to select a list that anybody who interacts with this proactive message will filter through into within autopilot. So I can either add a new list or select a list that I currently have existing in my platform. For today, though, let's go ahead and add a new list and say Eloise uh, newsletter list. Now to save this list, really important, just make sure to remember to hit that green tick button and this list is now created within an autopilot. And all this means is that anytime somebody enters their first name, email address on this proactive heads up feature, they'll be added straight to the Eloise newsletter list within autopilot. And I could then use that list to trigger a newsletter journey, for example, uh, within my platform. Now, last but not least, before you publish an exit, you are given a preview of what this proactive heads up message will look like on your screen. Uh, so please do make sure that you're happy with it. You can hover over and see the full uh, mode here before hitting publish and exit and sending that live on your site. So I'm going to exit this today because I already have one on my demo site, um, but you can see that when you do publish it, it does appear here as a preview. Uh, you could have multiple proactive heads up uh, on your site, and you do then at the bottom of each preview get a brief glimpse as to how that proactive heads up is performing based on conversions, which is the number of people that have actually submitted their details to you, and conversion rate based on the amount of engagement that you have had with that pop-up feature and then off the back of that, the number of conversions. So I've just had another uh, question through about a recording of the webinar. Never fear, I am recording it. So um, Dan and Andrew, I will capture both of your email addresses and send it to you after the session. Uh, for anyone else that's on the line, that's probably the easiest way to get a recording rather than you emailing me. So uh, just pop a question in here to the box, uh, letting me know that you'd like to receive it and I can send it straight your way. So we've had another question on the heads up messages, uh, which is, is there a way to have a series of heads up messages so that each visit builds a closer relationship? Uh, the answer to that, Dan, is uh, yes, there is. Uh, and actually what you're probably referring to here though is our standard heads up feature. So one thing I didn't mention when showing you through Proactive Heads Up is that we also have a version of heads up that you can show to known users, which you can access when creating journeys. Uh, so so 
that's probably the best way for you to do this. Um, alongside sending you the recording down, I'll also send you a link to our support page on the standard heads up feature so that you can start to see how a lot of our customers are leveraging that uh, to send personalized messages to their known contacts. Great. So now in our last uh, sort of 20 minutes or so, um, I want to take you through the exciting bits of the platform, which is adding your contacts and then building out your first journey. So I'm diving now into contacts section of the dashboard. The first step here is to obviously import your contacts. Now there's uh, three different ways you can do that. The first is via the app connections or Salesforce sync that we walked through uh, earlier in today's session. The other ways to add contacts to your account is through, again, this big green plus button, the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Import contacts allows you to import contacts from a list, uh, which is the quickest and easiest way if you have a database of contacts that you want to upload into autopilot. The other option that we make available to you is to manually add a contact at a time just by clicking this blue add contact uh, button above that uh, big green plus. Now, all of your contacts will live within this all contacts list of your uh, contact dashboard. From there, you can then create specific lists, smart segments and folders. Folders, I know, are uh, more of a dry organizational step here, but I do really encourage everybody to organize their contacts via lists. Um, not only is it best practice, it'll also make your life a lot easier to find a specific list uh, once you've created a number of them. And you can see that I'm using folders uh, over here on the left-hand side to, um, uh, to organize my contacts. So definitely encourage you to do that step. Now, the difference between a list and a smart segment, you might ask, uh, a list is a, a static list that you can create and manually add and remove contacts to versus a smart segment is a dynamic, um, constantly working segment that is looking for contacts that meet a specific criteria that you've set up when creating this smart segment. Now, smart segments to me are arguably one of the most important pieces of functionality within Autopilot. So I'm going to jump into this uh, smart segment configuration now to show you how you can use it and the different types of segments you can create through this function. I'm going to give it a name and press create. Now at the beginning of the configuration here for a smart segment, you'll see that you start with the total pool of contacts that you currently have in your autopilot account. As you then uh, select criteria that those contacts have to meet to stay in the smart segment, you'll see that pool reduced so that we're only looking at those contacts that meet the criteria. Now, different types of criteria you can set. Um, you can look at field values against contact records, whether they are currently on a list or smart segment. A uh, couple of my favorites, if they've submitted a form on your website, if they've visited a specific page, um, and then probably my favorite of them all, how the contacts are interacting with your email. So for example, we could build a smart segment of everybody that has opened a specific email or all emails that you've ever sent from the platform. Last but not least, we also enable you to segment by UTM parameters. So if you are using UTM parameters within your marketing campaigns, this is a great way to come through and build a smart segment of everybody that has interacted uh, via a specific UTM parameter. Now for today though, I will take you through a very simple field value configuration here. So the field, uh, let's just go with first name because that's a, a very simple one to show you. And I'm going to say uh, that first name is not, and then let's use my name because I know that I have two contacts in my platform called Eloise. So what should happen here is that you'll see the total pool of contacts reduced by two. Uh, when I say my first bit of criteria is that their first name is not Eloise. And as you can see, it has reduced. Now, what you can also do is you can build on these segments. So I can say, okay, my first criteria is that a first name is not Eloise, but then I also want to add into that criteria that their uh, gender, and let's just say for the sake of ease, is not male. 
And you'll see now that only 67 of my contacts match this criteria. If I wanted to preview what that data set looks like, I can do at the bottom of the page here, and then I can go ahead and create the smart segment. Now, because these smart segments are dynamic and constantly working in the back end based on that criteria, what that means is that any time a contact in the platform, whether that be an existing contact or a new contact that you've added, uh, any time that that contact meets that criteria, they'll be added automatically to this smart segment. And any time a contact no longer meets this criteria, they'll be automatically removed. Um, so it's a fantastic way to start automating some of your segmentation uh, and stop you from having to manually add and remove people from lists based on their profile. So I've had a question come through here uh, about uh, clients and triggering uh, mail within journeys if they don't have an email address. Uh, Brian, I might leave that until the end if that's okay with you because we can tackle that separately from smart segments after we've jumped into uh, configuring the email shape within a journey. Now, the last thing to uh, take you all through before we jump into those creating of the journeys is that you can export contacts from a list or smart segment if you uh, want to do so, so that you have a, a list on file. All you'd need to do is go into that smart segment or list that you're looking to capture. Again, if it's all of your contacts, just uh, head into the all contacts list. And then right next to this manage button on the right hand side, you'll notice a drop down arrow, click that and then just select export segment um, and that will export those contacts to a file for you. Great, okay. So let's jump into journeys then with our last 15 minutes. Uh, when you log into your or access your journeys portion of the dashboard, you'll see here a full overview or a high level view of all of your journeys. You can then toggle between those that are running, so your live journeys, uh, those journeys that are currently in draft form that you're still working on and haven't yet published, and also those journeys that you have for some reason stopped in the past. From here, um, as with lists, you can also uh, create folders to organize your journeys. And again, best practice, definitely encourage you to make use of these because it does get uh, sometimes hard to find a specific journey when you have set up a huge number of them. Um, uh, categorizing them by folders into operational onboarding, lead nurture, for example, just a really easy way to be able to find a journey in future depending on uh, what type of journey it is. All right, but for the moment you've all been waiting for, creating a journey. Uh, again, your probably uh, best friend in this platform is the big green plus button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Click that to create a new journey and you'll see here that I'm given two options. The first is to start a journey from scratch using a blank canvas. And the other option, which I mentioned very early on in today's session when talking about the Acquire, Nurture, Grow framework, is to actually start from an autopilot guide. Now. All of our guides have been built by seasoned autopiloters using that acquire, nurture, grow uh, methodology, and they're all designed to hit certain uh, use cases within each of those three phases of the uh, customer's life cycle. So if you're looking for a bit of inspiration or you're not sure where to start, definitely check out the guides and make use of them. They'll auto-populate shapes on your canvas and you can go from there uh, when configuring them. For today though, I'm going to start from scratch. So a complete uh, blank canvas and show you how to drag and drop shapes and then configure those shapes within the canvas. First thing you'll want to do though is give your journey a name. So I've given it a name and uh, from here, we're then able to build out our journey. So very high level autopilot journeys are made up of triggers, actions, and conditions. Triggers are the round shapes on the right hand side here that start a journey or set the criteria that a contact has to meet to enter this journey in the first place. They're then followed by the square action shapes, which uh, do things such as send emails, add a contact to a list, send a notification internally. And then condition shapes right down the bottom here enable you to uh, create criteria that a contact has to meet within a journey to filter down and through a specific path based on their engagement. So 
For example, one I'll go through today is you can have a look at see how a contact has interacted with an email you've sent them. If they've opened it, send them down one journey path. And if they haven't opened it, send them down a different journey path. So really great way to start personalizing your journeys and engaging and accelerating those that are showing that high uh, engagement rate with your marketing materials. Now to add shapes to your canvas, it's really easy. You'll just want to select that shape, drag it and drop it onto your canvas. Um, I'm going to add a couple of shapes here to my canvas and then take you through what those shapes are and, uh, and why I've added them in the way that I have. I did promise that I would show you a Salesforce shape, so let's also add that to my canvas. Okay, so I'm starting with my trigger shape here, which is a form submission shape, and I'll show you how you can capture form submissions on your site through this shape in just a moment. But what I'm saying here in this journey is that every time somebody submits a specific form, I'm then off the back of that going to send them an email, and I'm connecting shapes by dragging the arrow from my form submitted to my send email shape. At the same time, I also want to send a notification to my team internally to let them know that somebody has submitted a form. And because this is a new contact, I want to add them into Salesforce and assign them a lead if they're not currently already in Salesforce with a lead. So by adding in this Salesforce shape to your journey, this is how you can then create that sync between Autopilot to Salesforce to push any new contacts from Autopilot into Salesforce. And if that uh, contact is already in Salesforce, you can update them through these shapes as well. Now, the two shapes that I want to show you how to configure today are the form submitted and send email. So form submitted allows you to uh, capture any form submissions on your site. So what I'm going to do today is show you how to track a new form. The first thing you'll want to do is give it a name. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and capture my newsletter subscription. And the next thing you'll need to do for configuration is uh, navigate to that uh, page that has that form on it copy and paste the URL and you'll see this is the form here that I want to capture on my demo site and then paste it into the uh, form submitted configuration and hit continue. What's happening now is that autopilot is scanning that URL, making sure the tracking code is on that page and then ingesting the different forms and data fields. Uh, it tells me that I've already have that form set up, which I absolutely do. Um, so I'm just going to hit done for today and quickly go through and just uh, delete that form so I can take you through the rest of the setup steps. It's being used in my journey, so I can't. But all you'll need to do here, let's get back to this form. So again, scanning that page for the form. It's recognizing that I do have the autopilot tracking code on that page. And then it's telling me that I have one form on that page uh, and it's giving me a preview of the fields that are applicable to that form on that page. So I know I have email, first name and last name. One really cool feature here to show you is that if this form is on multiple pages across your website and you want to capture all submissions regardless of the URL that that form is on, you can tick this box to say if this form is detected on any other page, please also track those form submissions within this journey. Then when you hit continue, you'll be asked to map the form fields uh, across into their respective autopilot fields. Now we do try and auto populate this for you depending on the fields that we can pick up at our end. Uh, if we don't pick up a field, you do then have the option to go through and just map it to a field that you currently have in autopilot. If you don't want that field to be mapped across into autopilot, all you'll need to do is just leave this blank and we then won't pick up the data uh, when somebody submits that form for us. But let's go ahead in this case, I do want to capture last name. So I click done and that form has now been added straight to my form submission shape. And all that means now is that anytime somebody uh, populates this form on my website, I'll then be able to capture that form submission within my journey.
Now I have had a question through about hidden fields. Um, Brian, let me send you a fantastic support article on hidden fields, but we do have the ability to capture them. The other thing that we have the ability to do as well is to um, make sure that people fill out every single uh, data uh, or form field on our form to be able to capture it. So there's a couple of different options you have there when configuring it. Um, but again, I'll send you a support article on that so that you can read up a bit more uh, in your own time. Now the next shape in our last sort of seven minutes or so that I want to take you through is how you can set up an email and send it within your journey. So when you click that shape to configure, you have a couple of different options here. You can either add an email that you have previously created in the past, uh, or you can uh, start a new email. So I'm going to go ahead and start a new email. We do give you three options when creating a new email. Uh, so the first thing you can do is start a blank HTML email. Uh, if you want to uh, create an email that looks like it's come direct from one of your team's inboxes, uh, that's a fantastic way to send highly personalized messages and automate that sending uh, from team members on your side. The second thing you can do if you are already using a, another uh, email platform to build out your templates is that you can upload that template into Autopilot. The big call out here is that if you um, want to be able to uh, update any of the content on that uh, email template within Autopilot before sending it out, you will need to make sure that you have editable tags within that email to be able to make those changes once uploaded into Autopilot. The third option that we have here is for you to pick a template. Um, so I'm going to take you through this today so that you can see uh, the types of templates that we offer. Now there are six templates that have all been built around specific uh, use cases and uh, those journeys within the Acquire, Nurture, Grow framework. So for example, we have single article template, the newsletter template, an invitation, even a re-engagement template that you can start to leverage here. I'm going to show you the single article though because it is my favorite. Now once you're in the email uh, template builder here, you can customize any of the components of this email because we do have those editable tabs within tags, sorry, within our templates. You can change out images, uh, completely change the uh, custom copy and then use any of our formatting tools at the top here to get the look and feel that you're going for. And let's make this Arial Black. The other thing that you can do within these email templates is add in personalization fields. Uh, as you can see here, we're using a first name variable for personalization. All you need to do to add in these uh, personalization variables is select the uh, little man icon up here, top right corner, and then from the drop down, select the field that you would like to personalize the email with. All of these fields are, are standard fields within Autopilot, but you can also go ahead and add custom fields too if there's a particular data set that you want to be able to personalize your emails with. Let's go with first name. One of my um, kind of secret tips here, if you are using personalization variables, is that we do also make it available for you to add in a substitute. So let's say uh, there is no first name on the contact record of a, of a customer that we're sending this email to. So we're going to say, if no first name is there, enter in a substitute, which would be there. So instead of seeing high blank for that contact that doesn't have a first name in that data field, that contact will see high there. So it's a great way to be able to add in those uh, uh, different pieces of data depending on whether or not that currently exists against your contact record. The other thing to note here is that we do um, require you to have a unsubscribe link in all of your emails to comply with our acceptable use policy. If you did want to change the uh, copy that's associated with your unsubscribe, um, you can do that. All you'd need to do is just insert your copy, highlight it, and then add in using this plus button a link to our master unsubscribe. Uh, if you don't add an unsubscribe uh, link to your email, we will add that in automatically for you when the emails are being sent out. So just bear that in mind um, if you want to create uh, or remove that. So I've had a question come through about adding a new section to an email. Um, so these sections here within each of our templates um, are set 
unfortunately. So if you wanted to add almost like a new box to it, I would just recommend working within one of the boxes that we already have. So for example, uh, if hitting enter within this box will give you a bit more space and from there you can add in an image or additional copy. Um, but let's say that you didn't want Jenny Smith, for example, to show up in this box. Unfortunately, you can't remove that box. It would just appear as a white space uh, if you deleted the image and text. So just bear that in mind when selecting the right template for you um, in future. Okay, adding a subject line. Again, you can use personalization variables in your subject line. So I could say, um, hi, first name. Here is your newsletter. And then when I'm happy with that, I would recommend sending yourself a test email just to make sure everything is pulling through correctly. Uh, if you are going to use a lot of HTML within your templates, I'd also suggest that you use a platform such as Litmus to be able to test that across a lot of different devices and browsers. Once you're happy with it though, go ahead and publish and that email will be created and then you can add it to your shape. Uh, if you wanted to make changes to it in future, couple of key things to keep in mind. You can do so just by clicking on the shape, selecting edit email. Once you've made your changes, the key thing here is that you would need to uh, go ahead and republish that email within your shape to have those changes actually accepted uh, and built back into the journey. So that's key thing to keep in mind there. Okay, so it looks like we're almost out of time today, uh, which is a, a perfect wrap up to uh, all of the topics that we have covered. Um, Brian and Dan, um, don't worry, I will get back to you today with those articles that I've promised you um, in support of your questions. And I will also add you um, or send you a recording of today's session so that you have that on file. Um, so that's Dan, Andrew, and Brian. Never fear, I will email you a recording after today's session. If anybody else has any questions, we are working on a webinar 102 to come out in the next few weeks, uh, and that will be designed completely around journeys. We'll be taking you through how to set up a qualification journey, which is an operational journey on our side. And from there, we'll also then be diving into a, a lead nurture journey or a life cycle nurture journey, depending on how you want to use it at your end. So keep an eye out for that webinar. Like I said, it'll be coming in hopefully a week's time and we would love to see you all there as a follow-up and start helping you build out some more complex journeys. Well, thank you everyone for joining. Have a fantastic rest of your afternoon and uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you on webinar 102 in a few weeks time.